All right. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, let me say this. You know, first of all, this is for Grace Bible Church. Now, I do have a Facebook audience. I thank the Lord for them. Uh, I thank the Lord that if we can't get them in here, guess what? <laughs> we can get out there and get them. Yeah. And so Church. we thank the Lord for that. Okay? Now, in case you didn't know, uh, this is Christmas week. And I'm not a hater on Christmas. Let me just go ahead and put that out there. Okay? Now, I'm not big on Santa Claus because that's fantasy, that's fiction. You know, there may have been a guy that actually lived that they call Santa Claus, but I don't want to disappoint you. Ain't never been no Rudolph. Let's just go ahead and get that understood. Okay? So, I don't get in all of that, but you know what? I don't even get excited about all that stuff because I'm just going to tell you the truth. When I was a little child and I was taught Santa Claus and I was talking about Rudolph, guess what? It didn't mess me up. It didn't mess my mind up. It didn't lead me to the devil. I know we get overly excited. I'm not going to do that. Just not going to do it. Okay? But I do want to talk about Christmas. Amen. Okay, I have a key word that I want to give you guys today. Uh -huh. uh, and the thing about Christmas, this is the thing that I like about it is the thing that the world is not going to push too hard. Okay, the thing about Christmas is supposed to be the spirit of giving. Right. Let me let me repeat that: the spirit of giving, not the spirit of receiving, but the spirit of giving. And so I want to approach it from the angle of giving. Okay. It's when we are mindful of people and we care about them and we want to give gifts because we want to see them happy. We want to express to them that I was thinking about you. And guess what? I got you a little gift in token of me just thinking about you. That's the way I want to approach it. You know, on Facebook this morning, I put out a post, and I asked a question, okay? And the way the question went, it went something like this. It says, is it truly better to give than receive? I want you to think about that. Think about it. Because to be honest, the way the world looks at it, and the way a lot of our kinfolk look at it, and sometimes the way we look at it, is that if I don't get a gift, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be upset. You got it. But the scripture says, and I'm going to tell you right now, right there in the book of Acts. Yeah. Hold up. Hold up. In red letters. Oh. It says it is more blessed to give than receive. And so it is God telling us it is more blessed to give than receive. And so the thing that I want you to think about is that in this time of the year, have the mindset that giving, 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 this is how we are blessed because God himself says it is more yeah. blessed so know. to give than receive. So okay? And, and so let me say this. In all of your giving, I know that when we get gifts, we don't think about that. We say, you know, if I don't get a little Johnny, that bicycle, he's going to be mad with me. And so we'll make the mistake of getting broke behind a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny's smiling and you crying. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's what's wrong, y'all. Yeah. So remember, more blessed to give than receive. Y'all got that? Okay. And so, and so moving forward, moving forward, somebody ought to be getting something because you're going to be busy about giving. Come on now. Is that right? Giving. Now, the other thing about giving, y'all, is the motivation in which a thing is given. That's right. That's right. Everybody understand? You give out of love and concern and care. This is why you give. Everybody understand? And sometimes the folks you're giving to, they may not be happy. They might say, take that back. They ain't good enough. And then you hot. So that means, well, I won't tell you what that means. I'll let you think about it. Anyway, you know, this morning we tried to do a song. And this verse is going to tie right in. 
to what I'm saying. Now, for you that have your Bibles, if you're curious about the verse, just write this down in your note. It's Acts chapter 20, verse 35. The Apostle Paul is the one who brings to remembrance the words that it is better to give than receive. You know okay, now I know a lot of times we get excited about the red letters, but let me just go ahead and say oh, this. Lord. Is that when Paul makes that comment, Paul is quoting something that the Lord has said. Come on, bro. Okay, and so it's okay to look at it that way. Okay, and so we got that verse down. Okay, now the other verse that I want to give you, this goes in line with the song that we tried to sing that we messed up. Okay, but it plays right into the message. Write this verse down. Okay, everybody got it? Write this verse down. And that verse is going to be John chapter 15, verse 13. John 15, 13, if you got your Bible, go ahead and turn over there. John 15, 13. <laughs> Because we all up in the red on this one. Uh -huh. John 15, 13. And this verse, whether you know it or not, uh -huh. speaks to the issue of giving. Uh -oh. Okay? Now, I want you to understand that in the verse, he's not talking about a Tonka truck. Come on, bro. He's not talking about the giving of material things. Okay? But he talks about the giving of a human life Amen. as a servant to God. Okay? And so in John 15... Verse 13, listen to what it says. Greater love hath no man than this. Stop. Now notice this. Why? Wow, he's getting ready to tell you something. Yeah. Greater love than no man than this. Come on now. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, I want you to understand, when he talks to the issue of a man laying down his life, yeah, he can be talking about maybe dying for someone else, but, you know, that's not what he's talking about. What he's saying is that you lay down your life in the sense that you have given yourself to God as a living sacrifice on behalf of others. And so when we serve one Another, he yeah. said, there is no greater love. Yeah. I want you to understand that when you give of yourself, it is love, but it is also a gift. Yeah. It's a gift. Yeah. It's a gift. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. The idea of serving this time of the year, big families are celebrating. People are happy. They eating. They having the greatest of time. But I want you to understand that that is not true of every man today. Because there are many who don't have families. Amen. There are many Amen. that loved ones may have passed yes, in this season. It Amen. brings back painful memories. A lot of people are suffering in times like today. But yet God is calling on you and I. To demonstrate this no greater love yeah. that we will lay down our sails yeah. and give those that are suffering something that is more precious yeah. than yeah. material things. You know what that is? Yeah. It is time. Yeah. It is you going to them, listening to them, praying for them, just spending time with them. Giving of yourself. And this is what the verse is talking about. And so I want you to understand, this time of the year, you might be getting all of the stuff that you want. But think of those Amen. who aren't. Amen. And so when the verse says that there's no greater love, listen, if you want to walk in the love of God, give yourself. Lay down your life for another. Okay? Now I want you to understand that when we look at the verse... When it says that there's no greater love, well, I want you to understand the beauty of God is he'll say something. But every time God said something, he always has an example of how you can follow in it. He never says to do something and leave you hanging. He's always going to show you the way. So when we look at the verse, when it talks about the issue of giving, when it talks about the issue of laying down your life, we understand that God did that himself in the person of his son. His son 
sacrifice his life for all men. Let me understand. And so the scripture will give its example of how we are to walk. And so let me say this. Christ set the example. Now, here's our text, everybody. And it's just two verses. Turn to the book of Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at two verses. Because now we want to talk about the man that laid down his life. And when he laid down his life, it was an example of that no greater love. Everybody understand? Okay? Ephesians chapter 5. And, 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 and look at this. Everybody got it? Listen, listen, listen to what Paul said. Okay? Paul says, first of all, now he, he's talking uh, to the children of God. And he says in the verse, he says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. He said that we're to be followers of God. Followers of God. In other words, the thing that God has first done already himself, we give proof that we belong to him by demonstrating what he himself has first done for all men. And so when it talks to the issue of love and it talks to the issue of giving, it is us following the example that God himself first done for us. And so he says to us as the children of God, he says once again, be ye therefore followers of a God as dear children. Watch this. Notice the command that he gives. He says to you and I in the next verse that we are to walk in love. Stop. We are to walk in love. Now God gave the example of what that love is, but he says to us that we are to follow God. We are to walk in in love. And then God says, look, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Let me tell you the example that has been said that you can look at it and follow it. So in the verse, he says, and walk in love. Here it is. As Christ. Here it is. As Christ also hath loved us. Stop for just a second. We can say, I know that Jesus loved me. We'll say that. I know he loves you. We have, listen, if you're saying, I know Jesus loves me because I got my health and strength, well, you're falling short. If you say, I know he loves me because I got the Tonka chore or the motorcycle or everything that I want for Christians and I'm happy and I know he loves me because of it, well, you missed him all. Because, see, the first thing that we have to understand yeah. in Jesus loving me yeah. is kind of like what Paul says. Paul said, listen, I know that Jesus loved me. Yes, How you know, Paul? Paul said, he loved me and gave yeah. himself for me. Yeah. He gave himself. Now watch this. Let me tell you how awesome God is being a God of love. When Paul said that Jesus loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, when Paul was on the road to Damascus, a man on a mission to imprison the saints, Paul said, my former life, I was a persecuted. I was a blasphemer. Yeah. I was incurious. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, when he was all that, even right then, while he was in the act, yeah. right. Jesus loved me. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And gave Thank you, Jesus. himself Thank you, Jesus. for me. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Listen, if Christ had not given himself, there would be no salvation. Amen. If Christ had not given himself, words like mercy and grace would be obsolete with no meaning or power or purpose whatsoever. But because Christ gave himself, we can shout hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Jesus. Because Christ Hey! Yay! Hallelujah! Thank you. Himself. Yes, 
big enough. Everybody understand. Come on, preacher. And I want you to understand, watch this. When Christ gave himself, he was very involved in giving himself. He didn't just give you a little bit, but he gave you everything. Everything that he was. Everything. Think about it. The word made flesh gave his all. Yeah. Listen, the key word is he gave. Listen, yeah, he, he gave. did not make demands of you or what you had to do to be accepted no, by didn't. him. No, he just stepped down and gave yeah. himself. Yes, sir. Because I'm going to tell you something that so God know. knows about us. God knows everything about us. Amen. All that line we going to do about we going to get better this and that. Listen, God know better. Amen. That's why he couldn't wait on us to get it right. That's why he had to take matter into his own hand and do the thing himself. And so understand, Christ gave himself. I'm saved today, not because I'm a preacher. I'm saved today, not because uh, I, I might live right 90% uh, of the time. Won't tell you about the other 10. Yes. That's not what makes me a child of God. That's right, brother. I'm a child of God because Christ gave Amen. himself. Amen. See, this is the thing that we got to focus on is that Christ gave himself. Let me understand. And I want you to understand that in this evil day, yes, sir. The most horrific of the horrific of the worst sinner in the world can be found and Still. can be saved Still. because Christ died That's for right. them. Yeah. The scripture says that Christ Jesus came yes. into the world yes. to yes. save right. sinners. Yes. Yes. This is why he came. That's right. And guess what? We all qualify. Yes, sir. Hey. We all qualify. Yes, sir. Everybody understand, we qualify because we're, we're sinners in need of saving. Come on, brother. And so understand, I'm saved today because of what he gave. Thank you. Come on, Lord. Everybody understand. You, you know what? Help. Listen, and, and if the good Lord allowed us to be here next year and the year after that, the thing that I want you to focus on every Christmas is this. When you get your gifts, get your gifts. It's all right, y'all. Yeah. But, but have that mindset yeah. that God sets the example of giving his son because it's Christ okay. is a gift to us. We even call eternal life a gift. He says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Think about it. God gives us Eternal life, but yes, the only sir. way you're gonna get it, yes, sir. he had to first give himself. Yes, sir. Right. Do for you what you couldn't do Please for yourself. Sir. All these lying church folk and all that kind of Come stuff, on, don't get caught up in on, that. Don't get caught up in that where you judging other people, putting Come them down because they got problems you don't have, yes, and somehow you've reached a plateau that yeah. they're not oh, on. Yeah. You need to quit all that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ain't but one thing that will qualify us for heaven. And it the is tree. in what Christ has given. Hey, hey. Everybody understand? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And then the other thing, the reason that I have eternal life is because I accepted hey, hey. the hey, gift hey. of what he did Thank you, Jesus. for Thank you, Jesus. me. Okay. You, Jesus. Now, getting back to our verse. We're in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. We looked at it. We looked at verse 2. We're, we're, we're kind of walking our way through it. And, and, and so he says in the text, verse 2, he said, and walk in love. Now, I want you to understand that that word walk, that, that word walk has to do with your life, how you live it, what you doing. That's what the word walk means. Okay? And so how you live in, how you, how husbands treat wives, wives treat husbands, uh, how you treat your neighbor, whether you know your neighbor or don't know your neighbor, how you act in your job. Listen, when it talks about the issue of walk, it even talks about your relationship with folks you can't stand. Same thing. And some of y'all probably got some of them. Can I get an amen? amen. Well, of course you do. But when we look at the text, the word walk, he says, in spite of all of that, you. Walk in love. Amen. Everybody understand? And then he says, let me show you how it's done. And so we look at the verse and we understand that Christ 
loved us. Yes, Everybody got that? Yes, and, notice, and notice what it says as we go on in the verse. And so he says, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Watch this. Here's the proof. He didn't just talk about it. We need to get beyond the tongue, y'all. Yeah. And do what Christ did. He loved us, and he goes on the verse, and it says, and hath given himself for us. Mm -hmm. He gave himself for us, as the scripture says, as an offering gave. and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Stop. Watch this. He loved us. He proved that love by giving himself. Now notice in the verse it says that he gave himself an offering. I want you to understand, everybody, there had to be an offering yes. for sin. Amen. If there was no offering for sin, then death and sin would continue to reign. Yes, All men yes, would be good. most miserable and powerless good. to do anything about their situation. Oh, no. Men would just be born into the world, then they would die, and then they would go to judgment. Yes. But Christ gave himself an offering. Thank you, Jesus. And we know from the truth of Scripture that the resurrection proved the acceptance of the offering. And understand that the offering was made on your behalf. Amen. And so we glory in the resurrection that everything that God said that, hope. that he would do, it is true. And when he says that he loved me, right. when he says that I have the gift of eternal life, see, we can take confidence that it is a work that has been finished, it is accomplished, we can trust in it, because the Bible says that our God is not a God that can lie. Hey, sir. He cannot he lie. lie. Amen. Right. And so we thank God you, that because of what Christ did. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now, the other thing, as we look at the text, it says that it is a sweet smelling Savior. Yes, sir. You know, the thing about that, you know, when you look at that verse, it deals with the issue of incense. You ever burn incense? And you see the fumes of it is just a nice smell to it. Yeah. Okay, well, I want you to understand that. Look at it like this. The cross of Christ, what he has done. It is a sweet-smelling Savior. Number one, it is pleasing to God. The reason it's pleasing to God is because the one who knew no sin was made sin for us. Amen. But I want you to understand that, yes, he took my sin. Yes, he went into the grave. But, yes, he got up. And when he got up, he didn't get up with sin attached to him because we understand that through the working of the cross, the writer says in the book of Hebrews that he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Yes, Understand, child of God, that there is nothing yes, that separates you from him. Amen. It is all because of what he gave. Yes, sir. Everybody understand? Now, I want you to understand that as we look at that text and it's talking all about him, mm -hmm. listen, when he says that you're to walk in love, yes, he said, look, you're supposed to be just like That's him. right. Same mind he had yeah. in what he did, yeah. child of God, you need to walk yeah. in the same way. Yeah. Remember we said this morning that because we are ambassadors for Christ, that's what Sister Gina said, we're ambassadors for Christ. Yeah, right. Everybody understand? All of us ambassadors for Christ. Listen, how we live, how we talk, how we walk, somebody is looking in on what we're doing, and guess what? They're looking for a manifestation of God. Yes, Stop for just a second. Did you hear me? They're looking for a manifestation of God. It does not make any sense for us to be talking about love, 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 and we mean as hell. Amen. That don't do anything. That's true. But when we talk about love and we walk in that love and we manifest that love and people can see it, then they know that we really know who we say we know. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be the one to say, I know I'm a Christian because I belong to that church down the street. That ain't going to cut it. That's right. You better be a child of God because you know who it was that purchased you uh, with their own blood. That's right. And that's Jesus Christ. You yeah, understand. And so the writer says, walk in love. Yeah. That's right. This is what I leave you. Walk 
in love. I think there's a Bible verse that says that people truly know that you're my disciples on, by the man. love yes. that yes. ye yeah, show that's one what, another. Yeah. Now, some will get bent out of shape. Well, that's not for us. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. We give proof to who we know yes, sir. by walking in the things that they did, following the example that they left for us. Everybody understand. Okay? And so, in this time of giving, everybody, we give because we love. We don't give because we're looking for something in return. Nope. We give because we love. We follow in the footsteps of what is already set before us. Christ gave himself. This is salvation, everybody. This is salvation. I know a lot of time in the church world, we mess that thing up so bad. We want to put the rules and regulations on folks. And the sad thing about it is we putting the rules and regulations out there, and we ain't walking in it. We just telling you that you got to walk in it. We need to quit all of that. Christ gave himself. That is what we have to get out there. And so this is what I'm going to say. And I'm almost done, believe it or not. This is what I'm going to say to us today. If the good Lord allows us to live another day, Amen. just know that by you walking in love, Amen. you give proof to the one that saved you. And I always put the attention on the one that gave you go. himself. Yes. I always do glory. that. Glory. If I'm going to give him glory, yeah. it is because I know yes, that sir. without him doing yes, what yeah. he's done, I couldn't be a Christian. Come on now. It's not in me. I don't have the strength or the will, mm -hmm. desire. Listen, it's him and what he puts yeah, in us. us. Everybody got that? Okay, now I'm going to close on one more thing. Meditate on this. Because some of us will say, well, preacher, you just don't know. You don't know what I'm going through. You trying to tell me that I need to be showing love and you just ain't got them kind of folks in your life talking bad about you and beating you up and this and that. It's just hard. Well, I'll be the first one to admit to you that it can be hard. It can. But, but, but then again, can you imagine the Lord saying, well, you know, it's just kind of hard for me to die for all them hellish sinners. Come on, I don't know if I want to <laughs> give on, up bro. my life for all them folks that don't care nothing about me. Come on, bro. Can you imagine Jesus saying to the Father, hold up, hold up, Father. You sure you got this right? You know these folks don't love us. You know these folks don't care nothing about us. Father, you know if we go back and look at history, them hellcats been hellcats all their life. You sure you want me to come and lay down my life for them folks that don't care nothing about you? Are y'all hearing me? Uh -huh. See, I put it on a level where you can get it. Yeah. You don't need all that theological talk. That's right. Let's make it plain. That's right. And in spite of all of that, God said, yeah, still. Yeah. I want you to go down there yeah. and die for them folks. Yes, sir. Everybody understand? Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. You know why? Because God is rich in mercy. Yes, Lord. See, mercy don't mean nothing if you don't exercise. Hey. Everybody understand? Mercy is something that's shown to folks that are not deserving. In other words, we all need to be in the lake of fire. And God would be just. But because he's rich in mercy. Thank you, Lord. In spite of us, the son came and gave his life. That's the message, y'all. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful message. And the next time you get down and you feel like a nobody, you, you need to stop. Because you need to understand, watch this. You need to understand that the son gave his life to save you. And it's not so much that we worth anything because we never have. But the thing about grace, he loved us, y'all. And because he loved us, this is what moves him and motivates him to save us. Listen, God had pity when I couldn't help myself. God had pity. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And so if you want to talk about gifts, God gave the greatest hey, gift that could hey, ever hey, be given. Hey, he, gave he gave himself. No greater hey. love hey. than this. Hey. A man laying hey. down hey. his life hey. for his friends. Hey. And the sad thing about it is that we were never friends, y'all. Uh, come on, Richard. Now that's grace. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Are y'all hearing me? Are you understanding what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's all that's important yeah. is that you understand so what I'm saying. Uh, Listen, take that home with you. Yes, sir. And it'll help you to be thankful. Yeah, Everybody yeah. understand? Anyway, that is our, for lack of a better word, Christmas message. Thank you, Jesus. And I hope and pray uh, that we got some understanding. And guess what? If the good Lord says so, the same, so we got January coming up, and we got all year to walk in this love. Yes. And Christmas don't have to be one day. Come on now. Listen, there are 364 more days Thank you. a year Thank you. that you can demonstrate the spirit of giving. That's right. Is that fair enough? Yes, it is. All right. I'm done, but Bill, you can hit that. I see you.